face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys, and welcome to Course on How to Use Beware. And of course, in this video, we are of course going to talk about Beware's overall stats, but also what moves it learns, how to use it. Clearly, since of course that's the title of the video but also just in general what you can expect from it and what to watch out for because we are actually due to its normal finance set being of course only available through of course Mega Law Pony which till this video is not available in Sun and Moon making Beware not only unique but also quite ferocious and super viable in the meta due to its stats distribution now the bear Pokemon in general tend to be a lot slower but very 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 offensive but usually that does not work in their favor. Beware kind of stands out a little bit due to its unique ability of course being fluffy. And the fluffy ability makes sure that any contact move is reduced by 50%, which is actually kind of a big deal considering that beer Pokemon in general tend to be a lot bulkier. It also gets klutz and unnerved, I'm gonna go over them a little bit, but trust me, fluffy is the ability you wanna go with with this Pokemon. Now, if we look at the stats, of course, of this bear Pokemon, one really has to be beware. Yes, a terrible pun, I'm sorry. But yeah, 120 in HP, 125 in attack, and 80 in defense is really, really dangerous. That is definitely wall break his stuff. I mean, one has to take, take to account, of course, that 80 base defense is actually really high when you have a boost in 50% in contact moves. That is most physical damage, mind you guys. Not all of them. Likes of Earthquake, Rock Slide are not contact moves, sadly. Uh, special Axe, Special Defense, Super, super unimpressive. Definitely special defense definitely keeps it a bit on the weary side. As speed, of course, of 60 is quite bad, but being a wall breaker, it's not terrible and can definitely be adjusted to, of course, your liking. Having that said, of course, one has to take a suggestion that it's weak to a lot, isn't it? Finding, flying, psychic, and fairy are a lot of weaknesses to keep out on, and all of them be in common. Mind you, though, fighting and flying in general are contact move. With a few, of course, um, exceptions, but it's still worth keeping in mind that those may or may not actually be as dangerous, depending on what Pokemon you're facing, but Psychic are very likely to knock out this Pokemon without a doubt. So goes with Fairy Typing in general, even with Play Rough in mind, it still would hurt. Though Mimikyu kinda struggle with this guy, which is good to know. Rock Bug and Dog are your resistances, and they really... I mean, they're not really that too common. Rock are a nice filler to, of course, Rock and Earthquake. But other than that, one really has to keep in mind that those are the best kind of resistances. But at least it's nice it has something. And normal and, of course, fighting are a tough combination. But the stabs are just right and hurts a lot of stuff, at least naturally. Which makes me weird as the ferocious Pokemon as it is. Its normal level up moves are not really, you know, the best around in the world. The one that should be noted is Baby Doll Eye. A flail, payback, takedown, hammer arm, crash, paint, with double edge, and superpower. Superpower is probably the stab you want to go with. If you judge him for, of course, using this in a trick room environment, which is very capable of doing due to its stats, hammer arm is a very good way of leading and speed yourself up in a trick room. With that said, not really the best, of course, dog stab, which naturally are very, very good with fighting types, and Sally does like that. He gets pain split of all the things, and trust me, you don't want to use that mainly because of its natural high HP stat, it just doesn't make any sense here. But aside of that, Double Edge is nice, you don't want to optimize return, which clearly are the safer overall move, but Double Edge does sting a lot of people, and or a lot of mons, it could people really, people in general. But the one should really keep that in mind, that this is the moveset, not the broadest one. What this guy stands out a little bit more on is actually its Egg Pool. Because its egg move pool has a bit of a variety with Endure being of course prominent here, Force Palm, Ice Punch, which is very very important for all ground types and bulky grass types, Mega Kick, which is actually a very very powerful stab, mind you though, the accuracy is kinda shaky, Stomping Tantrum, very very good for opponents that tend to protect, so definitely a VGC move at first, but also for Baneful Bunker, Toxipex, we're basically gonna ruin it with this move, Thunder Punch, not available this video, but do get it from Ampharos. Could be very helpful for, of course, the likes of Pelipper and anything. And then Y Guard, definitely VDC move. But its best, of course, capability are the TM list. So, as you guys see, it has the normal type 
TMless basically. It learns pretty much everything, but at least a lot. I'm gonna go over, of course, the moves that I think are really, really important to mention. Uh, Roar is definitely up there. Bulk up, Taunt, Earthquake, Brick Break if you want to utilize yourself over that, over Superpower, Rock Tomb, Facade, Euralace, Low Sweep, of course, low in your speed and whatnot, and then we have Fling. Fling is important because of the Klutz ability, because that means that you can use yourself, of course, of a Flame Orb, fling that and get a proper damage output from that. Also, to get over the course of the likes of Iron Ball, if you want to use it in the Trick Room, go making it sure you go last. Fling is a nice last, of course, attack move, because you get, of course, that 200 power, base power, of course, of Darkness. Uh, outside of that, we have, of course, Shadow Claw, which may or may not be one of these more important moves, because, of course, this is normal. Fighting step, do not touch Ghost. Shadow Claw kind of solves that since, of course, it doesn't learn knockoff. And then we have, of course, Sword Stance, because why not? Bulldoze, Rock Slide, and then, of course, the usual stuff of Sleep Dog, whatever. Um, a lot of important moves here, like I stated here. It's important to remember that due to him not carrying knockoff Fling, and of course, Shadow Claw may or may not actually make it break apart here. And Sword Stance, Earthquake, super, super powerful, and Bulk Up is a very, very good. Of course, supporting set since eventually you are able to outmaneuver a lot of opponents with this. And with that said, we're gonna go over, of course, the sets this Pokemon can be using, but also things to be aware about. The biggest issue you have with a wall breaker is that you always are slow. So we're gonna talk about, of course, the speed creeps that matter. This is gonna be the only reason and relevant thing to talk about in Cosmic be Weird because it's being a 60 base mount. Now, we're gonna only take neutral defensive sets in mind because if there are a speedier variant, we're not gonna be a speedier variant ourselves. So, therefore, I'm just gonna mention, of course, the defensive sets. So, if you go in with the likes of, like I said, Adamant, which will be more often than not your set to go, then the easiest you have to beat here is for 7 base mount, 92 base speed, for 80 base, 172, that's a lot. So, usually, just go for the 70 base variant on 92 EVs, you have to have that. I'm not even joking, you always go into be able to beat 70 base mon. That's going to be important. One important Pokemon to beat here is of course the like of the Sidueyes, which clearly being able to outspeed it if it is a defensive set could mean everything. And then of course Milotic, which is a very, very speedy mon, usually, of course, the Bolt variant. on 180 EVs in that, and if Cresselia going to be a part factor of 85 base speed, then there's of course 212 EVs. So there are a lot to be thinking about here. You don't, like I said, have to creep everything. But creeping 70 base mon usually are important. You really need to outspeed a few relevant Pokemons. And trust me, if they can thinking that their defensive Pokemon can take a hit from you and you are speeding them and hitting them twice on a switch in, yeah, that's gonna sting and probably a lot actually. And if you were to use in a trick room environment, these are the things to keep in mind. Brave nature, clearly. You must use Sword Stance. Do not use a Bulk Up or anything like that. You want Sword Stance. And remember, you are bulky enough to pull that off more often than not. Life Orb could be used, but I would prefer Iron Ball. Um, mainly because, of course, you're actually getting slower. Because you are an 80 base Mon. It's not the slowest. And it are Pokemon that are actually able to outspeed you if you are, of course, of a negative nature. One of them being the likes of Slow Bros. And you don't want to deal with that. You you really don't. You actually want to outspeed them, if anything. Uh, with that said, you have to always have dual stab. Dual stab is required. Trust me, return will probably do more often than not more than a possible earthquake filler could do, or ice punch. Really, I really mean that. Shadow claw is your go-to filler move. But as stated here, iron ball and fling are a very very nice way of wrap up a possible trick room. Hell. Surviving the course dual stab and probably not go stab to fling it, yeah. That's that's your opening to pull off another trick room and try this one more time. So of course with that said, we're gonna go over of course my favorite set with this Pokemon is actually the choice band variant. Yes. It's very, very straightforward. Adamant, 252 of course attack, 92 speed to of course beat those pesky 70 base Pokemon defensive variant of course. 166 in HP, mainly actually there to uh, kind of filler your bulk a little bit. One, one could suggest that special defensive might be smarter to soak you know, the possible hits. Trust me, due to of course you always using Fluffy on this Pokemon, Flamethrower and stuff like that would still hurt, and trust me, you're better off switching out in the first place, and really just get the HP to at least survive something from both sides. Now you're gonna go with the Recurrent Superpower Earthquake. Those are your primary bad moves, and then the last move can be anything, but I optimize of course Ice Punch. 
mainly because of land of switch in, which easily, of course, can take a few hits from this guy, even though it is banded. But uh, Ice Punch in general just are a pretty decent filler. Shadow Claw, while solving the Ghost issue, and it actually is an issue for this Pokemon, it should be noted that due to the like, lacking proper Dark Stab, you're probably better off dealing with the defensive type of the can switch in. Dealing with the Poison type, Earthquake, nice. Dealing with Bulky Grass type, Ice Punch, nice. Neutral good coverage, your go-to move anyway is always going to be Return or Superpower. If they are less than ideal in a situation, these Earthquake and Ice Punch are your filler. But trust me, you could go with Shadow Claw on the last move, so I'll play any Dota Mania. I should mention Hail, you can probably go for Thunder Punch once they're available. It, the last move basically are a useless filler, depending on the matchup you are facing. You really just want to damage up with Return and Superpower. And trust me, resisted hit with this Pokemon still hurt due to it being, of course, banded. So right, the second set is, in my regard, it's harder to use, but it's definitely up there. And I've tried different variants and different movesets on this, and this is pretty much what I think is the most optimal. You, for the bullcap set, you need to be adamant still. Leftovers, in my regard, are probably overall the better move to have with this Pokemon. Uh, HP, of course, 252, maximize that recovery. One and two attack, mainly here to actually make sure that after one bullcap, that you are able to two-hit kill what defensive toxic pack. Kinda need that, it's kind of a switching against you, and trust me, it's close to actually being worth it running facade over anything else due to, of course, being able to, of course, getting poisoned or burned. Uh, Night 2 Special Defense, it basically are filler. Uh, special Defense is your primary way of actually walling a few stuff, since Bullcap is supposed to, of course, solve the rest. And then Night 2 Speed, as for use, to be able, of course, to solve this, of course, Speed ties against, of course, the 7 base mod, which you do want to beat. Having that said, Return of Assault is my primary move here. Hammer Arm is the better move. It takes... Uh, I don't like it, I'm not gonna lie about that. Losing speed is annoying when you have a speed creep you're also gonna solve, but it's worth keeping in mind that it's for specific mods and for a specific stab relief really, you want to have a maximized damage output. Bulk up, because it's needed and it's your primer set of, of course, possible setup, and Shadow Claws, so you're not walled out. As stated though, while this is a um, viable set, I still think Bandit set is the ideal play. And also should mention that I have a few suggestions that have been your Assault Vested variant, etc. Nay, do not use Assault Vest. Trust me, Choice Bandit set is the best, but if you want to have a bulk up more defensive variant, this is awesome. And clearly it does work with Grassy Terrain and you get extra recovery to be able to set up. But it's kind of tricky and I'm not going to try to... Uh, sugar-coated. I will say this though, if your opponent do lack a ghost type, if you're aware of that, Facade, Sleep Talk, Rest, Bulk Up, and of course going Special Defensive fully, might be worth using. I'm, I'm just gonna mention that it. So yeah, that is actually all for this video. I really hope this was informative for you, at least to some extent, and uh, Beware is a superb wall breaker for this generation, and definitely one of the best one even at that. And it just is worth mentioning that there are things here to watch out for. And if you have those factors in mind, Beware can be a ferocious Pokemon that rips apart a team early game. And hey, late game it probably pulls it off too, due to, of course, unique ability and, of course, type and combination. The dual stab is just mwah, it's just the best, really. So, with that said, do you guys have any sets with Beware that you have been using that you want to, of course, use and share with us? Make sure to, of course, write it down below. And uh, yeah, with that said, thank you of course so much for watching, and uh, if you want to see another Pokemon of course being suggested and how to use, also write it down, suggested to him is what I'm trying to say, and I'll actually get on to it, because I really like making this video, and I really like you guys of course supporting them. So with that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.